This is a Bridgestone 500 1985. Uh, this was a road racing bike uh, from the 80s. It's a 12 speed. Uh, I picked it up because I wanted to build a gravel bike. Uh, these things were originally fitted with 27 inch wheels. So a pretty common swap you can do on these older road racing frames is swap the 27 inch wheels for a 700 C wheel set. And when you do that, it usually gives you tire clearance to run up to like 35 C uh, gravel tires. So that was the, the plan for this build is I wanted to build a, a steel frame vintage style uh, gravel bike. Um, so I've got a lot of new parts to go on. Uh, so enjoy the video. This right here is a Velo Orange uh, threadless or quill to threadless adapter. Uh, it's the long, long one that I longest one I could find. Uh, it's 180 millimeters, uh, so I wanted to give myself a little bit extra rise, um, you know, for comfort and for just uh, to make the bike fit me a bit better. Uh, so I was really impressed with this uh, this piece of kit. This will allow me to run any kind of modern uh, stem and bars that I would like on this frame. So I've got a 60 millimeter stem on there, a slightly shorter, this is a large frame, uh, and that's just gonna help the reach, help knock down the reach a little bit, make it a little more comfortable. Uh, these are the three x seven Tourney, Shimano Tourney uh, brifters. Um, so I'm going to upgrade the rear to seven speed from the, the stock six and uh, run just two by in the front. So in order to run the brifters, I have to remove these down tube cable stops, or I have to remove these uh, down tube shifters uh, and install down tube cable stops. So it's pretty simple. You just unscrew the down tube shifters, they come off, and then the cable stops bolt onto the bosses. So this is an 11 speed road wheel that I picked up. I picked up this wheel set off of Facebook Marketplace uh, for 60 bucks. So it's an 11 speed and I'm putting a seven speed cassette on there. So I need to run a couple spacers uh, in order to, for the cassette locker to be able to tighten down. So that, uh, now that the cassette is tightened down, uh, I'm ready to go ahead and put the tires on and then we can get these wheels on the bike. I'm running 35, 700 by 35C Donnelly uh, gravel tires. Uh, and I really, I, I got these tires for free, but I actually really like them. They have a continuous center tread and they've got little knobbies all around the edges. Uh, so I've ridden them and they, they do provide some really good grip in gravel.
so for the the stock brakes I was lucky enough uh, to where the um, brake arms had enough reach to where I could adjust the pads all the way down and they would be able to work with the 700c rim since the 700c wheels are slightly smaller in diameter than the original 27 inches so on some conversions uh, you your brakes your OEM brakes won't be able to reach to the rim braking surface so you'll have to you would have to replace them with long reach brakes but these uh, Bridgestone self-centering side pull brakes, they had enough uh, reach in the cable in the in the brake arms uh, for me to just move the pads down, and they worked with well with the rim. So as you can see, there's a really good amount of clearance on the front uh, fork for that 35C gravel tire. All right, so these uh, old frames, they were originally, they originally had a hub spacing of 126 millimeters from inside to inside. Now, uh, modern road uh, wheels that are rim brake are 130 millimeters uh, inside, inside distance. So uh, you can do a few things. You can either just spread the chain stays apart uh, when you're putting the wheel in, uh, or you can cold set the frame to be uh, pulled farther apart. Uh, but whatever you do, um, you'll have to realign the dropouts. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm realigning the dropouts to be straight. Um, so I'm just putting an adjustable wrench on there and bracing it, my, uh, bracing my hand against the chainstay and basically bending the dropout uh, to be angled farther in so that when the frame is spread farther apart, uh, the dropout is straight to the wheel. Now I did that on both sides. Uh, and I was able to get the dropouts straight. And you can see me struggling a little bit here. It's because I decided not to cold set the frame. So I do still have to spread it apart slightly when I put the wheel in, uh, but that's, that's not really an issue to me. Now these are the original brake pads, uh, so they're pretty dried out. Uh, I've got some new uh, cool stops coming in the mail, uh, but they just haven't gotten here yet. So as soon as those get here, these will be will, will be thrown out and replaced.
Now I did have to replace the derailleur. Um, the original derailleur would not work with the Shimano indexing. Uh, I believe it was a Suntour Cyclone group set. Um, so I had this old Acera mountain bike derailleur uh, as an eight speed, but it'll work for seven speed just fine. Uh, so I threw that on there and it, it ended up working perfectly. This is the original front derailleur. Um, I was able to get this one to work just fine with the Shimano indexing. Alright, so there it is. Um, I did end up changing the bars to a different set that I had, uh, and th I changed the seat out as well. Um, and also, if you notice, there's no brake pads in this clip. But here's the finished bike. Uh, I'm going to do a few rides on it before I wrap the handlebars, and uh, we'll talk about uh, the rides in the next video, and uh, we'll install the grip tape and the brake pads as well. Uh, so guys, I hope you guys like the bike.